How do you say that? Yeah, no, no. D-U-E-R-S-T. Did you remember Durst is the worst? Ah! Durst the worst, bitch! <laughs> Durst the worst, bitch! Durst the worst, bitch! Durst the worst, bitch! Definitely brilliant man. 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 In the crime, I think the thing that kind of got me you say this on, it made you use that you, you knowingly committed the fraud. So I guess that that kind of says that, well, why didn't you expect anything different if you knew you were doing it? Granted, you know, other people have done it, but we have also had a lot of injustices, especially in the black community, about a white person and the black person the same crime. But the black person is the one who gets more time for the same thing with resources. Um, also, um, uh, President Trump has not uh, denounced white supremacy. Um, he had, and it has been statistical that there has been an increase in hate crimes. And he has not acknowledged it. He has not. He has denounced it, saying that it does not exist. It's is untrue. But as I mean, your numbers guide, we've seen that occur. And if, if personally, it's like if you just denounce, say that this is wrong, that what is what is being promoted is wrong, then I think a lot of people will go, okay, finally he he gets it. But when you give it a pass as though it doesn't exist, that kind of questions uh, brings a lot of questions. And finally, um, he has, from what I've seen, he has. Um, Really, he, he's become more isolationist, and I get, you know, um, make America great again. I'm trying to still figure out when it was really great, especially from an African-American perspective. Um, you're bringing, you, you're the cutting off globally. And I understand that corporations, you know, have plants in, in foreign places because it's cost. And I get that, I don't necessarily agree with it, but I, I, get, I get it. But the thing is, if you're going to continue to bring or try to keep jobs here, then you need a educational infrastructure to make that happen. But his secretary of education, DeVos, is doing just the opposite. It's taking money from many educational um, systems that will prevent you know, schools from teaching what is, is better, what is, what is greater for students. So there's a lot of contradictions that is coming out of his mouth, that is coming out of his tweets, um, his action is saying one thing, or his tweets are saying one thing, action is saying, so there's a lot of contradiction there. But I still do not see where that the Republican Party is an open party, is the, the, the party of multi, uh, cultural because the policies do does not support that and oh the half of thing, but you know that the Dixiecrats did, you know, became Republicans even though you say two were on record, but the ideologies and the platforms still remain in the Republican Party. So you still see you still see that just because they don't put on paper the ideologies and platforms did do that. And I'm not Democratic or Democrat or Republican, more of a Republican. But um, <laughs> but we do understand that the Democratic Party has not been very favorable to um, the African American community because there are a lot of some things that that is um, debilitating. But the Republican Party does not offer anything to counter that either way. So we're kind of on our own. Many minorities are. Somebody starts speeding on the highway, uh, and they go 100 miles an hour. Um, they actually know they're speeding. They know there's a speed limit. They might think they can get away with it. They might think that they have good reason to speed. They may think the speeding law is stupid. But the truth of it is, in terms of did they know what they're doing, yes. Okay. Now, granted, nobody expects the cops to catch every speeder. Everybody knows the cops catch some guys, they don't catch some other guys. Uh, hey, that guy, that other guy was going faster than me, yeah, but I got you. We get all that. We also get that there's a range of penalties. So when you're speeding, you could get, go get driving instruction, suspended license, a $500 fine. But now imagine that you were speeding, a 
at 100 miles an hour, and somebody gave you five years in prison. You would go, what? There's no one in the United States who has ever gotten five years. See, that's my case. My case is that every case of campaign finance law that is prosecuted has involved political corruption. Some get back. Something under the table. I want something out of it. I am not aware of a single case in the United States' history where somebody who gave 20 grand over the limit with no corruption, first time offense, was even prosecuted let alone given a felony, let alone uh, locked up for eight months overnight, let alone given a $30,000 fine, let alone mandatory psychiatric counseling. So the, the thrust of my case is find me another case that even remotely resembles mine, and I will fully withdraw any outrage or claims of selective prosecution. But if you admit that in all of American history you can't find one case, then you have to admit that I have a point. And my point is I was singled out. And that's all I'm saying. I'm not saying, by the way, I should have gotten off scot free. I'm not saying I shouldn't have been prosecuted even. But I am saying I should have just gotten the same penalty as other people who did the same thing. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> now, um, turning to Trump. Um, let me address the white supremacy issue first. Here, I think, is really the problem. Um, from the moment that Trump stepped out on the stage, he was tagged with the white supremacist label. Now, just think about this for a minute. As a cultural figure up to that point, no one thought Trump was a white supremacist. Trump was hanging out with rappers, he was at every Hollywood event, uh, he was with Hillary Clinton, she was at his wedding, he was a completely mainstream figure. Jesse Jackson would drop it on him and they would have tea, he'd give money to Operation Push, he'd hang out with Al Sharpton. There was no question of him being a white supremacist. And think about it, here's a guy who grows up in Queens, right? He's not like Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton grew up in Arkansas. His mentor was Orville Faubus, the very guy who stood in the Arkansas schoolhouse to block black kids from getting to school. I mean, there's a whole segregation history there. There's no history with Trump. But the problem was that by tagging him with the white supremacist label from the beginning, which was a total political strike, let's put the white supremacist tail on this guy, it now puts him in an extremely awkward position. Which is, it's kind of like, now it's hard to get away with me, but let's say you, everyone kept calling me a white supremacist. I'm like, I'm not a white supremacist. Yeah, there goes a white supremacist. Yeah. A white supremacist has a new movie out. Are you going to go see the white supremacist movie? Okay, white supremacist, will you denounce white supremacy? That's the problem. Is that, is that the left put out a deafening chorus that Trump is a white supremacist, and then tried to get him to ratify the attack on him by denouncing white supremacy, which, in my view, he rightly refused to do, because he understood what they were doing. I don't believe he has the slightest sympathy for it. Um, but he, he, he reads the script. He knows what they're up to. Um, that's the problem. Um, no, I, I did not say that he was white supremacist. No, I, I know you didn't, and I'm not saying you did. I was talking about the public, the, the, the general attack. Now, the other issues you raise, I won't do justice to because they're complex. But, but I don't think that on trade or on foreign policy, Trump is actually either a um, anti-free trade, nor do I think he is an isolationist. I think that Trump's point on trade is something like this. If you have tariffs and we don't, how do we get you to take yours down? Answer? And, and by the way, think of how this resembles the whole logic of the Cold War. If you're building nuclear weapons, we're going to build nuclear weapons, not because we intend to use them on you, but because we want to deter you from having any thoughts of using your nuclear weapons on us. Trump looks at trade that way. He has a somewhat militaristic view of trade, but I think he's actually correct, because the old Milton Friedman framework offered no way. The Japanese had massive tariffs in the, in the 80s. And you ask Milton Friedman, he'd be like, let them, let them have all the tariffs they want. What do we care about it? We just shouldn't have tariffs on our side. And I think Trump realizes that 
You know, it's one thing to say this as an economist, but this has tremendous real-world effects. Lots of people don't have jobs and can't, can't stay in their homes because of all this right. rhetoric. So think about what you're saying because it affects people. So I think Trump is on it. Um, I predict that Trump will do something in Venezuela. Uh, I don't think the Maduro regime is going to last much longer. The reason two <coughs> Russian airplanes with 300 tr troops just landed in Venezuela, they wouldn't do it if two things weren't happening. One, Maduro is losing the confidence of his own guards, so he needs Cubans and Russians to protect him. And two, he's a little afraid that a U.S. SEAL team may land in his living room <laughs> and blow through his head. Uh, and I'm not saying that will happen, but I'm saying it's a possibility, and the United States is most certainly not said it's not going to do that. Uh, it's one thing to commit U.S. troops. It's another thing to realize that there are 50 other options in foreign policy that you have short of going to war uh, that have the effect of removing a really bad guy. Um, the mistake, I think, with the Iraq and stuff was all this nonsense that if we break it, we have to fix it. Well, you know, as if this is some kind of store. Oh, well, I knock it down, I gotta fix it. That's not what foreign policy is. If you get rid of a bad guy, all you have to do is make sure that a less bad guy takes his place. That is your only responsibility. You don't have the responsibility to own the country and fund it and run the education system. None of that. You have the responsibility to make the world a little better while you protect your own self-interest. So I think Trump, there's a realism in Trump. And admittedly, I'm watching to see. You know, I, I don't, I'm only giving you my take on it. Um, um, and maybe a take a little colored by, by Trump's pardon. But the truth of it is, I think, I think that Trump is a guy who, no, I have to admit that. I mean, my wife was very skeptical. My wife is an old buddy of Ted Cruz. She loves Cruz, and there was a big bloodbath between Trump and Cruz, and to be honest, Ted Cruz's dad married us, that you mean. Uh, so we, we, we kind of came out of the Cruz camp a little bit. Um, but uh, that being said, even Ted Cruz is recognized that Trump is doing things uh, that should be supported. And so Trump's, Trump has a remarkable ability to make friends with old enemies. Seems odd to say. Not all of them. Like, I, I, I sense Rubio is still sulking a little. <laughs> But nevertheless, it's a very interesting time to watch politics, and it's changing so fast. But thank you all for being here. I really enjoyed it. Thank you.